At the second part, we are going to introduce amplitude abnormalities, which include focal attenuation, generalized attenuation or suppression, focal increase in activity, and generalized increase in activity. Attenuation indicates decreased amplitude of one type of activity, such as activity in a certain frequency or of all activity. It usually involves multiple electrodes. If confined to one electrode, it is more likely to be due to smear of electrode past or some other artifacts that affect the recording system. Focal attenuation of phase activity is a useful marker of abnormal cortical function. Common causes include intracranial mass lesion, for example, subdural hematoma, subdural empyema, and dura best tumor. Above lesions filters phase activity, which lead to focal attenuation of phase activity. Other etiology include focal cortical dysfunction and intracranial mass lesion. In this EEG, it's double banana montage. We can see there are attenuation of phase activities over left hemisphere. It's mass of artifacts here. So the patient have a lesion over left hemisphere, which lead to focal attenuation of phase activity. Then we talk about generalized attenuation or suppression. Generalized attenuation may be a normal variant, or it may suggest a cortical generalized injury. The amplitude is usually less than 20 microvolt. Suppression is worse than attenuation, and it indicates complete or nearly complete disappearance of each activity. It's an example of generalized suppression. But can we say this patient has electrocerebral inactivity? If we want to say the patient has electrocerebral inactivity, we have to change the sensitivity to 2 microvolt per millimeter or 20 microvolt per centimeter. And the EEG is now using 70 microvolt per centimeter. So let's change the sensitivity to 2 microvolt per millimeter. We can see there are still diffuse low waves of cerebral origin. So we can only say the EEG has generalized separation, but not electrocerebral inactivity. Then we talk about focal increase in activity. It can be present in the setting of focal pathology, like brain abscess, stroke, tumors, vascular malformations, and cortical dysplasia. It can, however, it can all be associated with focal decrease in phase activity as well. The most classic example is bridge reason. It results from an area of skull defects. Because the skull filters phase activity, so the region without skull, without skull showed EEG waves higher in amplitude and sharper in appearance. In this EEG, it's double banana montage. Before the patient closed his eyes, the EEG looked, looked nearly normal. However, when he closed his eyes, the posterior dominant reason became more prominent. And we can see there is a symmetry between the posterior dominant reason of bilateral hemisphere with higher amplitude over left side and lower amplitude over right side. The difference becomes more prominent after we change to A1, A2 mode touch. And we can see the EEG waves looks sharper and uh, higher amplitude over left side. So it may be due to bridge reason. The patient has cerebellar tumor status post-operation with a scar defect over left posterior head. And this is another example of bridge reason. We can see there is nearly continuous polymorphic delta uh, theta activities over left parietal occipital area with higher amplitude and sharper contour. This patient has left parietal occipital ICH status post-operation. Then we talk about generalized increase in EEG activity. 
The most famous example is excessive beta activities. It is most, most commonly associated with sedatives, such as barbiturates or BZD. Chlorohydrate usually produces less excessive beta activity, so we sometimes use chlorohydrate in patients or in children who can't cooperate with EEG examination. But if there is asymmetric generalized beta activity, it can indicate abnormality. As an example of excessive beta activity, the patient takes BZD for insomnia.